Welcome back to the channel everyone, we're here to talk about Smackdown, and honestly I thought Smackdown was a little better this week, still wasn't, still wasn't great, but I feel like it, it was a little bit, little bit of an improvement, um, so, let's talk about it shall we, so, so we kick things off with The Miz, and John Morrison, now, I just want to tell you guys, it's official. It is official. The reason why John Morrison is back with The Miz is not because it makes sense. It's because it is nothing more than pure nostalgia. That's all it is. They know, WWE knows John Morrison and The Miz were a tag team back in the day, back around 2007-2008. They know that The Miz and Morrison were a tag team back in their early days when they were still young, rising stars that were, that were on the rise when they were still young. So WWE knew this, and they thought it was a great idea to put these two back together. Now... Now, the reason why I say this is nothing more than pure nostalgia, because that's all it is. These two guys were a tag team eight years ago. These two guys were a tag team a long time ago. And I'm not saying John Morrison being with The Miz is a, is a bad idea. Because, because some people might have mistaken that I said, oh, this is bad. Because I don't like The Miz. No, it's not because I don't like The Miz. It is clear I've never been a big Miz fan. But the reason why I don't like it, it's because it's just nothing more than pure nostalgia. What part of that do people not understand? I've said this about Edge so many times already on Monday Night Raw, on my Monday Night Raw reviews. Ever since he came back, I feel it's nothing more then nostalgia. That's all it is. And I don't understand why there are people out there that are actually okay with nostalgia. I really don't understand it. So The Miz had some kind of trailer. They showed some kind of trailer to their next movie, I guess. You know, that they could become the next tag team champions. Which I highly doubt. And then, and then, and then the new day came out, and they did their usual, and they did their usual, and then Miz uttered the words, "We've beaten every single person that there is to beat." Now Bailey said this last week, and out came Naomi. Miz and Morrison say they've beaten every tag team, and who comes out? The Usos, and they start doing their little. Whoa, 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 whoa. I do want to laugh at that, but that kind of is a, it's, that is kind of silly. But yeah, they came out and they did their little whoa, 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 whoa. And, and then they uttered the words, you've never beaten the Usos. And then out came Ziggler and Rude to provide the distraction for Miz and Morrison to attack Kofi and Big E. And then we had the Usos versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude. And the Usos get the win in a in a decent tag team match. It was a decent tag team match. I feel bad for Robert Rude, man. I, I really do. I said I, I've said I, I said this on Twitter. I feel bad for Robert Rude. He he gets pinned all the time. Do you know who that reminds me of? Billy Kay. Billy Kay of the Iconics. Whenever they were in a tag team match, it was always Billy Kay that would take the pins and lose the match for her team. I feel like Robert Roode has become the Billy Kay of the men's division. So you ba so basically, long story short, I I'm so long story short, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode are basically the male version of the Iconics. A good tag team that always loses. I feel I feel like 
I, I, I feel like Robert Roode needs to split from Dolph Ziggler. I really do. I really do. Lo I, I enjoy Robert Roode. He's one of my. He's def. He's definitely someone I really like. But I'm. I just can't take him seriously as a tag team performer. He needs to be in the singles division. He needs to be challenging for the Intercontinental Championship. Can you imagine that that new? Can you imagine that Intercontinental Championship around the waist of, of, of Robert Roode? Come on. He's better than this. He's better than just being a joke. He's better than jobbing in every single match. He's better than that. So we had Elias versus Cesaro. This was a this was actually a very good match. I actually enjoyed this match. Especially that suplex that Cesaro did. That was very incredible. Cesaro continuing to prove why this man deserves a push. If anybody should have beaten Shinsuke Nakamura for that Intercontinental Championship, I believe it should have been Cesaro. I believe Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura could have turned on Cesaro at any point, and you could have built to Cesaro challenging for Shinsuke. But no, but no, they had to go on and give it to Braun Strowman, who I don't, I don't see him having a long reign. I don't see him having a long reign. I think Braun is going to have a pretty short-lived reign. But uh, we'll see. But Elias got the win at the end of the, at the end of this match. I feel like Cesaro should have won, but whatever. So we had King Corbin being after being humiliated with the dog food. Now he knows how it feels to be humiliated, because he thought it was funny to see Roman Reigns get get uh, humiliated with dog food, and now and now Baron Corbin is being humiliated with the dog food and now he can't stand it. Now he can't stand it because he's the king. So King Corbin demands one more match with Roman Reigns and please, and please be it, actually have it be the last match. I felt like the dog food match could have been, you know, the end of the feud, but no, we have to get another round of Roman Reigns and King Corbin. So at the Super Showdown, we're getting Roman Reigns and King Corbin inside of a steel cage. whoop de doo So we have Goldberg. Bill Goldberg, or as I call him, Oldberg. He has his eye on the Universal Champion, The Fiend. Really? If you bring Goldberg back, to challenge for the Universal Championship. Yeah, I get it. He never got his rematch. But. I don't want to see this match. I get why some people may like this match. Because, oh, Goldberg is putting over a young talent. Sure, that is a good thing. Sure, that can be looked at as a good thing. But I've been hearing people claiming... That they think Goldberg is legitimately going to defeat the Fiend at the Super Showdown. Now, now please, don't be an idiot. Please, don't be a stupid idiot if you actually think that. There is no way in hell that Goldberg is going to beat the Fiend just by Jack, with just jackhammers and a spear. Because that's all Goldberg does. All he does is a jackhammer and a spear. What makes you think that what makes you think that he's just gonna keep jackhammering and spearing the fiend until he stays down? He can throw all the jackhammers, all the spears he wants at the fiend. But all it takes is one man of a claw to paralyze Goldberg in pain, and he's down for the three count. The Fiend is going to defeat Bill Goldberg. So all the people that think Goldberg is going to defeat The Fiend, you people need to calm down. It is not going to happen. Daniel Bryan squashed Heath Slater. 
I guess that I guess uh, the thing that the fiend changed in uh, Daniel Bryan is that Daniel Bryan is more aggressive now. I guess that's what he is now. He's becoming more aggressive. He didn't turn heel. He's just becoming more aggressive. Shinsuke Nakamura, Braun Strowman, their little their little feud's not over with. And uh, Braun Strowman celebrated his first singles championship victory. As I said, I don't think Braun's going to have a long reign. I don't think WWE's going to give him a long reign with that thing. I highly doubt they can, they can give Braun a long reign as Intercontinental Champion. I think there's going to be somebody out there that is going to beat Braun. The reason why I think Braun's not going to have a long reign is because, you know, there are a lot of credible opponents for him, like Sheamus, like Cesaro, like a Shinsuke Nakamura. And if they get Robert Roode out of the tag team division, someone like Robert Roode. There are people in this division, there are people in that division. Who's to say Lars Sullivan doesn't come back and challenge Braun Strowman for the Intercontinental Championship? Who's to say Daniel Bryan doesn't challenge Braun Strowman for the Intercontinental Championship? Who says Elias? You know, there are, there are opponents, there are people. There are people for Braun. So that's why I don't think Braun's gonna have a long run. I think there's gonna be. I think someone like Sheamus. I would more want Sheamus because I think he would. Because I think he should have one final run. Someone like Sheamus could defeat Braun Strowman. So it's possible. So it's possible. But anyway, getting a bit off topic here. Shinsuke Nakamura comes out. He wants a rematch. Braun Strowman says he'll defend his title anytime, anywhere, any place, even right now. So Sami Zayn does the typical heel thing that, you know, he says he wants his guy to have a rematch, but then when the champion's like, oh, okay, I'll give it to you right now. But then Sami's all like, no, 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 we won't have it right now. But then, out, but then, but then uh, Sami Zayn says he has a plan B. And the plan B was the revival. The revival come from behind and they, and they attack Braun Strowman, or as I call the revival, the troll vival. Because honestly, every single day, it almost feels like every single day, there are news reports about the revival wanting their release from the company, or they're not re-signing with the company, or, 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 or all this shit about the revival leaving the WWE. I mean, honestly, if, it, if, if it's under a person by the name of Dave Melter. If that news article has the name Dave Melter written on it, don't believe it. Because Dave Melter is a complete, utter idiot. People like Dave Melter, people like Brad Shepard, people like Brian Alvarez, even, even PW Insider, Ringside News, those people aren't to be trusted. Those types of people aren't to be trusted with news articles because 90, 95% of the time, they are wrong. They get a lot more wrong than you think. They were the same people that said Shane McMahon was going to become WWE Champion last year. And how wrong were they? They said Sasha Banks threw a temper tantrum and wanted to leave the company. Not true. Sasha Banks cleared the airways with those. Cleared the airway with that. On her chronicle, saying she never did it. it. That's not who Sasha is. That's not who she is. She doesn't behave like that. Honestly, people, be people believe these people. The amount of things that these people get wrong when it comes to news articles, you would think a normal human being would grow a brain in your goddamn head and realize these guys are not credible. But it's crazy. How, how many times that these people are wrong in their assumptions? But people continue to believe them. People continue to read their reports. People continue to believe what they write on their articles. Yeah, they got Edge right. They got one thing right. They predicted that Edge was coming back. Yeah, they got one thing right. That doesn't mean they are credible. That doesn't mean... They are people that we should 
go to for news articles every week. There is so much shit that these guys get wrong and it's baffling to me how people continue to believe these people. These people are fake. But you continue to believe them. So that's why I'm calling the revival the troll vival. Because I, I, I don't know if people know kayfabe or not. I don't think people know the difference between kayfabe and real life. Sasha Banks and Bailey are two of the biggest trolls on social media. So are the Revival. They troll a lot on social media as well. But people think that is them being real. That's them being real. You know, not being the real person. The Pam. Bailey Pam. Sasha Mercedes. People think that's the real them. It's not the real them. It's them playing their characters on social media. It baffles me, man. It baffles me how people believe this. I don't ble believe for a second that the Revival are leaving the company, and I don't believe for a second that they asked for their release. I don't believe it for a second. But yeah, the Revival, they attack Braun Strowman with Shinsuke and Sami. Braun Strowman tries to make the comeback. And actually, he does make the comeback. But then he runs into a King Shasa by Shinsuke. Yeah. What a monstrous champion we've got. Yeah. What a monstrous champion we have. Yeah. And, am I supposed... Is this the same guy that tipped over an ambulance? I don't think so. Sheamus, he had a match. He squashed Apollo Crews. Chad Gable. I'm refusing to call him by that name. By that name they call him. Chad Gable comes down and he gets bro kicked for his troubles as well. Making Sheamus look really strong. This is why I think someone like Sheamus should be the one to defeat Braun Strowman for the Intercontinental Championship. Because you're building him up so strong since his return. And in our main event was a fatal four way. It was Alexa Bliss, Naomi, Dana Brooke, and Carmella. To, and the winner of this match would receive a number one contenders match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, would become the number one contender. They would become the number one contender, Patrick. But they didn't say when. They didn't say when that person wins. And my money was on Naomi. Because it made sense for Naomi to win because of what happened last week. But what did WWE decide to do? They decided to take the stupid route and they give it to someone that makes utterly no sense to give it to. They give it to Carmella. Mind you, Carmella's been off TV for weeks, and all of a sudden she gets a number one contender spot? More importantly, Naomi came out last week proclaiming that she wants an opportunity at Bayley's championship. But Naomi's the one that takes the pinfall and gets pinned in this match. It would have made more sense if Carmella pinned Alexa Bliss after Naomi delivered the rear view. Like, Carmella can do a super kick, but not pin Naomi. But they have her pin Naomi. Now, now, I'm not like everyone else. I'm not like everybody else who gets pissed off at something that, that I don't get. Over time, when this happened, I was a bit frustrated when this happened. But, I thought about it for a while, and I've been trying to think of reasons why they did not give it to Naomi right away. And one of the big things that I'm that I that came to my mind was the fact that they're saving Naomi versus Bailey for like maybe Elimination Chamber or maybe WrestleMania. Because people are claiming that this match between Bailey and Carmella could potentially be booked for the Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. Now I doubt they will go to Saudi. The reason why I think why I don't think they're going to go to Saudi is because of what happened last year. Now, now we did get Natalia and Lacey Evans, but, but, but look at the clothes that Natalia and Lacey Evans were wearing. They were wearing long-sleeved tops, and in Saudi Arabia, it's very hot. And fans were, like, throwing water bottles at them. 
So I think that could be one reason why I don't think they'll go to Saudi Arabia. Two, they could do Carmella versus Bailey next week on SmackDown, or maybe some other time during the build-up. They could do that as well. Or they could save it for Elimination Chamber, but I highly doubt they'll save it to Elimination Chamber, because then that means we have to have a whole month, a full month of build between Mella and Bailey. We have to have a full month of that. We have to have a full month of Bailey and, and Carmella build. That's why I don't think they'll save it until Elimination Chamber. I see them either doing it, possibly at Saudi, if they want to do that, or they'll do it sometime next week, or maybe a few weeks before the Saudi show. But also, that also leads another question. Naomi's loss, I felt like it might have hurt her a little bit because she just come back and she's already losing. I don't think it's a good thing to bring someone back and they start losing immediately because that doesn't, you know, it doesn't help their case. It doesn't make things better for them. But more importantly, I think Naomi is being saved. That's the only thing that I can think of is that they're probably saving Naomi for another time. Either WrestleMania. One thing that I proposed was a possible triple threat with Naomi, Sasha Banks, and Bailey at WrestleMania. They could do a they could do a, a potential triple threat. I think that'd be cool. You could have a situation where maybe Sasha and Bailey remember Remember when um, Sasha and Becky Remember when Sasha and Becky were trying to become number one contender for Charlotte's Divas Championship at WrestleMania 32 that one time. They could do the same thing there with Naomi and Sasha. They could have Naomi and Sasha battle it out for the number one contender spot. And there, and there could be a point where both of them get pinned. Where they both get pinned. And Bailey claims that no one's going to challenge her. And, but then they make the announcement that Bailey will face them both at WrestleMania. That could be a possibility. That could be a possibility. So, instead of me, you know, getting a little frustrated or angry that Naomi didn't win, I tried to think of reasons why did they not do it. And, I, and I'm thinking that is the only reason why they did not give it to Naomi. That they're either planning on saving her for WrestleMania, or they are planning on saving Naomi at the Elimination Chamber. But either way, I am making a prediction. Naomi will be champion. Now, I know there's a superstar shakeup coming up after WrestleMania. That's why I say champion. I'm not going to say what specific title it is, because there's a strong possibility that Naomi could be sent to Monday Night Raw with the Usos. But I highly doubt it. I highly doubt they'll get moved, because they've just moved to SmackDown. But I'm, gar but I, but I'm making a bold prediction. Naomi will be a champion in 2020. I am very confident that she will be champion in 2020. What I would do, what I would do, is I would have Sasha be the champion at WrestleMania, and I'd have Sasha Banks drop the title to Naomi at SummerSlam. That is, my, that is what I propose. That is what I propose, and that's what I think could be, you know, a really good moment. Give the first half of 2020 to Sasha Banks and in the and then the last half of 2020 you have Naomi. I'm not giving up on Naomi. I'm not giving up on the fact that she will be champion again. Naomi will be champion again. Mark my words. I am very confident that she will have that championship around her waist. That's what I propose. That's what I think should happen. What do you guys think? Do you guys like my idea of a triple threat? Between Sasha, Naomi, and uh, Bailey, And do you like my idea of having Sasha be champion for the first half of 2020, then drop it at SummerSlam to Naomi, and then the rest of the year, Naomi runs as the champion? If they're, both, if, and if they're both on SmackDown, that's what I propose. But if they're on Raw, if Naomi's on Raw, I doubt she'll be the champion on Raw. But... Because they'll probably have, like, Shayna Baszler as the champion by that time. 
if I know that if I if I know this stupid company but anyway yeah those are my opinions guys those are my opinions on Smackdown I thought Smackdown was a little better I think it was a little better than what we've been given could could be a lot better but I will say the women's match was very good and uh, I am very much and, and also the Otis and Mandy uh, stuff is uh, going down very soon um, I'm very much predicting Mandy Rose to become a babyface she her face turn is imminent I keep hearing a lot of people thinking that Mandy's gonna portray Otis or act like she never loved Otis well you people are silly you people well, you people are silly you people think you you people only think that because you think that's what WWE is going to do I don't think they're gonna do that I think WWE is going to go full on with this Mandy and Otis relationship and Mandy Rose is going to be a part of Heavy Machinery. Otis is going to get his going to get his lifelong dream and having Mandy Rose as his girlfriend. Sonya Deville is going to be a heel. That's the one thing that this women's division lacks. The one thing that this women's division lacks are heels. I think there's a strong possibility that they could start turning people heel. Because if you're going to turn Mandy Rose's face... They need to start turning people heel. I say turn Carmella heel. I say turn Nikki Cross heel. I say turn Lacey Evans heel if you want to do her as a heel. Sonya Deville, you know? Like, I say it's time to start turning people heel because if you're going to turn Mandy Rose face, nearly the entire roster is baby faces. So if you're going to turn Mandy Rose face, you need to start thinking of turning people heal but anyway guys that was my final that, that was the last thing I forgot to mention but you know I, I rest my case on that you guys let me know down below your opinions on Smackdown I thought it was alright could have been better but anyway hit that thumbs up if you guys did enjoy comment your thoughts down below and what do you think of my pitch my ideas with uh, Naomi heading through 2020 anyway guys See you guys next time.